Welcome to another episode of Journey Unknown. I'm Laura, Troy's at the farm as usual. <laughs> nah, we're actually having a bit of a different weekend this weekend, if that makes sense. Troy's gone to the farm to do some work on our new decking and I'm going to Ballarat to pick up our caravan after it's been serviced. And so Coco and I are gonna go camping. Aren't we girl? Come on girl, pop up, let's go. Ready, set, go. Good girl, good girl. You took some blanky with you. Let me get that one. Put your paws up. And that paw, good girl. And that one. All right, there we go. Now we're talking, where's your other one? There you go. And there's Flamingo. Okay, you got Flamingo. Hey, hey darling. I've never been up this way before in terms of camping. So hopefully it's good. First, we've got to get petrol. Hey girl, just you and me. Girl's trip. <laughs> Thanks darling. Love you. just about to hit the road and it says two hours and six minutes to the caravan dealership it's 145 k's from where we are so estimated arrivals just after four o'clock so that's not too bad petrol was really cheap it was a dollar 93.9 and that's why the, the station's so packed the Land Cruiser does take a fair bit of fuel because it's a dual tank so it's 110 litres and obviously every cent adds up at the moment so but if you want to live the caravan lifestyle you got to put fuel in the car that's what you got to do So um, big weekend of working on the farm this weekend. We're trying to actually get ready for our engagement party, which will be in a few months time. So there's quite a bit of work to be done. Uh, Laura's gone to pick up the caravan um, after its service. So I'm all by my lonesome and I've picked up a new bit of farming equipment. Check this out. Happy days. So finally, I'm going to be able to drench the, the uh, cattle without having to try to do it on a fence, like it's pretty amateurish to do that. But um, picked up this bad boy, what a ripper. Beautiful cattle crush, one of the old school ones. It's actually built really well, it's so strong. 
and um, heavy duty. And you know, we're only running a few cattle, so it's, it's gonna be uh, sufficient for us. It's towing like an absolute mongrel at the moment. It's, uh, it's quite, quite heavy, so I think the wind's getting it a bit, so I'm just cruising around 80 kilometers an hour, and just, um, I've got about 100 k's to go till I get to the farm. And then uh, I've got, I may need to make a big concrete pad and then lift this off with the neighbor's tractor and then put that down on the pad and then bolt it down and we should be good to go and then what i'll do is is make up a, a cattle race so we can push the cattle through there put it in the crush drench them and uh yeah do things the easy way instead of the hard way for once but hopefully laura's having a good time uh she started work quite early today so she could finish earlier to pick the caravan up and she's going to go do a solo camping trip so be careful out there, sweetheart, and um, enjoy yourself. I'll be down at the farm building deckings and uh, getting ready for this engagement party. Can't wait. <laughs> we'll bring you along on the ride. I've made it to the dealership. And... Yeah, I made it to the dealership and they invoiced me. And that's all paid up. It was $3.95 for a standard tandem axle service and they fixed, well, they say they fixed all the uh, warranty issues. We'll see. But apparently a full service for a tandem axle trailer is 680 bucks. So that's note to self for next time. Funny thing, we funny thing was the guy goes are you towing it and I said yeah he goes really you tow I'm like yeah and then he goes oh what's Troy doing I'm like, he's at the farm doesn't really matter just I guess they're not used to it uh, but anyway there's not much I can say on that other than yes I tow the van Come in, okay. I'm pretty busy. Straight back. Forward, yeah, it's all down. I think they've ticked everything off that had to be done. It sounds like they worked on it as soon as we dropped it off after South Australia, so it's probably been sitting there for a while. Oh. Used to having her on the back. Anyway, we'll see how it all turns out soon. I'll let you know when we go and get settled at our campsite. Talk to you later. All right, safely made it. Nice slow drive, but she was she's uh, went well in the end. Not too bad at all. All the straps are still really tight, so that was strapped down really well, which is which is great. Constantly just checked it and made sure it was safe. Nothing come off it. But it's bloody heavy, this thing. Like, it's got some serious weight in it. The trailer can handle it, though. Yeah. All right, so now I've got to navigate my way through the, this paddock around past the dam. Dad's just trying to clear some branches for me now. Hey, chooky chooks. Chooky chooky chookies. Probably let them out, a bit of a walk around. But yeah, I've got to navigate my way through here. So, we'll see how we go. Should be all right. Might, might hit this branch here. I'll get the old man to, 
to direct me through. Oh, there's some low branches there, and I might have to cut some down. So I'll show you where it's going. We moved the race, the uh, cattle ramp the other day, and put some blue rock down just so when trucks come, when we sell the cattle, truck the truck can come and back straight into it. So I've just fixed up this driveway a little bit here. And then the idea is I'm going to try to maybe put the cattle crush in here somewhere. Big concrete pad. And then and then make a bit of a cattle race so we can push the cattle in here. Or at least they can come into this area here and then straight up the ramp into the to the back of the truck. That's the plan. We'll see what happens. Get a load, Molly. All right, Dad's getting the chainsaw. We'll dock that one off. Hopefully I don't need to dock the big one off, but that's the only obstacle I think I can see. And I don't want to roll into the dam, so I can't get too close there. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you haven't been to the RACV gold fields before, I'm right here by accident. I've actually stayed here before and it's an amazing hotel with this like indoor outdoor pool. But not here tonight. So the maps took me some stupid way. I kind of got to go back on the highway and then left again somehow. plantation but there's supposed to be free campgrounds here so we'll see worst case is we can stay at the RECV resort
feels like driving into Dando's and not knowing what to expect. So I'll be glad once we actually hit the campground because I am starting to get a little bit freaked out that I'm right in the middle of the bush. I do still have 4G, which is good. Sharp left here. They're not far to go, 300 meters. There's supposed to be a pretty decent creek there, but it's dry. There's heaps of firewood. Ooh, there's some cars here. Pretty sure that's supposed to be a creek. the creek out there. There's a couple of cars here but I think I might move on to, to Slady Creek number two. So we're here, there's one there and there's one there. Not sure where I'm supposed to be going. Right, so the permits are finally in for the, for our decking. So it's go 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 before this engagement party, and realistically, I can only work on it during the weekends. So it doesn't leave me with many weekends. Uh, I've got my brother-in-law coming down to give me a hand, which is great. He's a builder, so he'll um, he'll knock this thing up in no time with uh, the help of myself. I'm going to put the post hole digger on the excavator and dig some dig some holes 600 deep, put some footings in the bottom and so hopefully tomorrow we're good to go and fingers crossed, please, please do not hit anything. There's water, power, Aggie pipe, everything right near where we, we need to to build this decking. So obviously I'll, you know, safety first, I'll turn everything off and make sure um, and just take it easy and hopefully we don't bring up any power or water pipe because yeah you just don't want to keep fixing things anyway I've got to fuel up fuel up the excavator and then get this auger on and uh, start hooking in I think that'll do for now. I'll just leave a little bit in the tank in case we need it for some other bit of machinery around the farm. Otherwise, we're gonna go into town and that's always a pain in the butt. So the old man's just gone in to grab a couple of slabs of beer because the weather is absolutely mint. And after a hard day's work, you have a beer. Looks like there's going to be a blue. I'll just show you this. One thing you've always got to be careful around here, especially in the, the hot days, is when you lift up tarps and things like that around the farm because there's um, some little slithery suckers that like to hide under there. So the old man's put this tarp over all the over all the the um, attachments for the for the excavator. Keep them nice and new. Look at that! No little mates. You either find. Snakes or rats? Right, we need this one, the 300. 
and this one here. Right, all the uh, decking materials here, concrete, our bearers, our mubu, it's about $6,500 six worth of um, timber there. It's, God, everything gets just so expensive, doesn't it? Anyway, I've started digging the holes over here with the excavator. Fingers crossed, I've done three at the moment. Fingers crossed we do not hit anything. That's the name of the game, power's off. Everything's turned off, so it's completely safe. And these are the, the holes that we've already dug. Six hundred deep. What do you reckon, King? Better than digging by hand. Glass air's loose. Oh, we've got about sixteen holes to dig. It's all marked out here, and we know that there's Aggie pipe under here. We know there's water pipe running to the the, um, what do you call it? Bloody water tank, seriously, I can't think right now. All right, beer o'clock, finally, 16 holes all dug. Looks like a bloody minefield. Yeah, we're good to go to put the footings in. But, yeah, time for a beer. Does a good job, the old girl. Don't know what I'd do without that thing, I'll tell you. So we've just come up that road and I've just stopped here because I'm absolutely busting for the toilet, so I need to, I need to go. You're busting too, girl. Oh. oh yeah, door's wide open. My God, look at the marks on this. Why won't the pump turn on? Alright, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what's happening before I run out of battery. So I did manage to go to the toilet. The one thing I didn't do was turn the battery on, the 12 volt on to kick everything in. So that's just like haven't used it for a few weeks and you just forget and then when you're busting for the loo you just want to flush the damn thing anyway I've decided that we're not gonna stay here because I just don't think the sites are big enough for the caravan and I don't like the look of some of the vehicles here so to get out I have to go through this four-wheel drive track the wheels are slipping a bit and this would be really good when it's had a bit of rain because the creek will be full but I'm actually a little bit 
uncertain about it without Troy. Even though I've got Coco, um, some of the turns into the campsites are a bit tight as well. So I don't want to get myself into a pickle where I can't get out like how I just got myself into a pickle at the RACV resort. Lucky I got out of there. Like it's a really nice park and there's some really good four wheel drive tracks, but not with this van. It's just, uh, it's a little just too tight and I thought the sights would be big enough. All right, we're back. Just had to change batteries. So I've come to a T intersection. I'm trying to get the hell out of this park and it is eerie just sitting here in the middle of the bush. Like you think someone's gonna come out and no one will, but I am here. So I've got to go there and then I'm back on the highway. So it's not that far. It's a sharp corner and this is the problem with the van. This is what I will say about regional parks. So regional parks in Victoria are a little bit hit and miss. Okay, you don't know what you're gonna get. Sometimes you get some really good campers. Other times you will get some, I don't know what they call them, but people that just live there, right? Um, not homeless, but you know what I mean. So I, I don't necessarily take my chances with things like that. And, even though I've got Coco, it's it's not really about that. It's more that the this, the campground wasn't suitable enough for this size caravan. And if I had checked the caravan at the dealership, I would have seen the state that it was in. So it's really dirty all over the walls. Like their fingerprints are everywhere. They didn't even bother washing the van. And I'm interested to see the work that they did because it it doesn't actually look like it might be up, up to standard. So I'm probably more keen now to get home and get the van back in the factory so I can have a good look around it and clean it up. And I mean, look at the state of the car. <laughs> it's, it's a disgrace. Alright, we had a quick dip in the spa after all our hard work. Time for, for some uh, porterhouse. Just keeping it simple. Oil, salt, that's it. I reckon we're going to be in for a good sunset. And then tomorrow, tomorrow morning, um, we'll, get to, uh, we'll put the footings in. My brother-in-law will turn up and we'll get all that over here. Beautiful decking. Can't wait to show you guys. So I'd spoken to uh, Laura earlier. Uh, she's picked the caravan up. Everything's sort of sort of fine there. I mean, that's another story. We'll go into that, you know, at some stage. But she was going to go camping by herself uh, with Coco, of course, and. Sorry, that sun's sort of in the way. But um, 
yeah, didn't really feel that comfortable about camping in a certain destination, which is a bit of a shame that uh, this day and age that we have to be concerned about where we camp or or worried or whatever. I don't know. Is it society or is it uh, just our mindset? So, yeah, she's making her way back to the factory and she'll drop the van off at the factory and then head home after that. But, um, yeah, unfortunate, darling, but uh, you could have been here working hard on the decking, ready for our engagement. Just saying. But it's great that you were able to pick up the van. <laughs> <laughs> all good uh, things are nearly done here dinner with just dad and I tonight a couple of porterhouse steaks a few beers and uh, we'll watch the sunset it's coming down nicely and what are you doing missy what are you doing you can smell the steaks can't you hey buster boy how you going boy come here boy yeah it's treacherous out here, it's bloody blowing a gale. Hopefully that big tree doesn't come down because it's, I reckon it's about to. It's on a bit of, bit of a lean anyway, it's going to be firewood. Alright, how's the garden looking? Spring onions. How's that sunflower? So our, our neighbour actually does, I'm yelling at the moment because it's really windy. Our neighbour actually does um, honey. It has bees and we have we get so many bees over here on this this thing here the ripper the tomatoes are going okay everything else looks good that's a beautiful nectarine plant We've got some pumpkins some little little cherries oh my god Babe, that is good real good all right so we need some lettuce what we do here is just cut some cut some lettuce and that will do two people no problems whatsoever give it a bit of a rinse and oh god the crunch on that is unbelievable the garden has produced once again. We've got some beautiful lettuce here. Apple cucumber. Look at that baby. Straight out over there. And the one lone tomato. But these tomatoes are the bomb. They're really good. Unfortunately, we've had some bugs get through some, some of the tomato plants. So next year we'll probably put some, get a dome enclosure, which will work well. Uh, the capsicums from the supermarket, same as the onion, but we've got some uh, good produce here that we're about to whip up next to the porterhouse steak. Let's hook in. All right, guys, welcome back. <laughs> we are back in the factory. Had a good sleep last night because yesterday I actually started work at 5 a.m. So I was so tired driving to Ballarat to pick up the caravan, driving through Creswick Regional um, Park and then driving back home so um, give me a girl this one was so good oh you darling but yeah we just carked it by eight o'clock we we're in bed so I opened the caravan I've cleaned it up a little bit but I've noticed a few things in here that the dealership and the service guys just really have not taken any care when they've been working in here so I'll take you through Can you see that? Can you see all that? Yep. That, my friend, is just finger marks. Dirt all through here. Dirt all along the bench. And then, look at that. There's just all dirt and dust up there. It's just filthy. Even Troy's cupboard. It wasn't like this before we left. There's, there's dirt, like fingerprints all along here. So they were to fix this, but they've just put... They've actually done just a shoddy job, to be honest. But 
all their finger marks are all over it. Um, this was the, the table they were to fix. It looks pretty good. Look at this. There's marks all along here. Look how filthy that is. And they haven't fixed this door. They were supposed to go screw, 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 and they haven't. Now, in the shower, for some reason I just decided to open the shower and this is what I found. Well, look at this. Tell me, why on earth, when you drop your caravan off to get serviced, you pick it up like this? What the hell are all these pieces of wood? What is this pole that we never had, which has also put marks all over the shower? This isn't ours. Those pieces of wood are not ours. That really got on my nerves and they're gonna hear about that. This morning I decided, well, it's a really nice weekend. It's nice and warm. Maybe I'll just try and find somewhere down the beach that's close to home that is dog friendly and we can just go away for a night. All I gotta do is make the bed. That's easy to, easy to do. But I called two caravan parks. One was in Hastings and one was in Lang Lang. People in Lang Lang didn't call me back till uh, just before midday, so they missed out. But that looks like a really good caravan park, so I will show you that at some stage. The caravan park and the caravan park in Hastings they were free and they only had unpowered sites available, so that that's that's fine for us. So I decided to take my sister and my my nephew camping for the night and Coco, and just get away for a bit and I've never actually been to Hastings so this will be um, new to me too. slowly taking shape all the stumps are concreted in going along nicely just got to put the bearers down and we'll start the decking and then we've got the lower deck here that we'll sort out uh, tomorrow once this is all set and ready to go must be due for a beer
Jesus. I wouldn't recommend this park for big vans. I told them it was 20 foot plus the drawbar and they put us in the smallest site and then it's really hard to navigate around this driveway so probably wouldn't come here again. Okay. Lucky my mirrors are helping me. 